Okay, so our next speaker is Marco. He's data scientist at Bravo Systems. His crew is here, and they're great. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. <laughs> so uh, uh, Dr. Marco Nikolic is data scientist with a history of working in the information technology academy and service industry. He has PhD in transport planning and is author of the several papers. During his PhD studies, his research was focused on optimization of systems with implementation of evolutionary algorithm and prediction of customer choices with the implementation of utility theory and legit model. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and he's going to talk about GPS data and genetic algorithms. So, yes. what is yours? Do I have, a, do I have a, uh, something for presentation? Yep. Oh, thank you. It's the first time that I use this, so. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm really honored to be here today to present you my model, which was the part of my PhD researches with the name Processing GPS Data with Genetic Algorithm. Um, so this, uh, I think, it, uh, it's working. I want to start this by one statement that uh, satellite navigation system and devices that use this uh, uh, generate, uh, provide large amount of data uh, generated by vehicles. So how this helped to, help to the scientists? You should know that Half century ago, this was a really tedious job to collect the data of a movement of a pedestrian or, or of a vehicle. So, so you have a couple of ways how to do it. You can, uh, you can track them, you can inter interview them, but uh, it was really costly for this. And this technology really boosted the many researchers on this topic after it. And also it helps engineers for planning, for simulation, for prediction, and etc. But there is a drawbacks of this system, and the first one is that uh, GPS, G, uh, GPS position are majority, it, you have some error while you're recording it. So there are big probability that this GPS position is not the real position of the vehicle. The other thing if, is if you have a low frequent data recorded for GPS devices, you could occur something known as segment skips, and this is when you don't generate the data from each link where vehicle traversed, so you need to fill that hole by your algorithm. And the last is that um, you now, you, uh, many applications need to first project your uh, data from your GPS devices that you recorded to the, to the vector map. So because of this, scientists invented some complex model known as map matching processes. And I will speak about this. The one, one, oh, oh, this is, this is forward. So, what is a map matching model? Map, matri ma map matching model basically provides us with a way how to spatial match the data obtained by GPS devices on a vector map. So, we want to reconstruct the true position of the vehicle and want to reconstruct the path where vehicle traverses. So, in this illustration, we see that we first have some GPS trajectory, and we want to find the, on a second layer which is beneath it, we want to find which is the path vehicle traversed on our vector map. And I'm sorry for this. Uh, we have a two way to do this. First is real-time processing. This is known as incrementer type. And this is less accurate. And it is used by navigation, uh, for navigation of vehicle and for fleet management, and also for other applications. But why it's less accurate? Because they don't have the data where uh, for future data about the vehicle. And the second one is global type, which uh, is using for batch processing, and you usually use this for collecting travel times on your street network, for finding the patterns of road choice, and for estimating the traffic flow, and etc. of course. So we're going to deal it with the second type. And I see that this slide doesn't provide good animation, so maybe I will have a problem when I explain the model. Propo my proposed model is a global map matching algorithm, which is used for low-frequency GPS data. By categorization of the prominent author, and this it uh, it uh, 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 this is classified as advanced type model because it combines several other techniques. Beside the genetic algorithm, uh, I implemented dynamic time wrapping and our algorithm for valuing a fitness function, and I will I will present the whole model in the future in the future slides. But first, uh, for the ones that is not familiar with the genetic algorithm, I want to briefly explain what this algorithm do, basically. This is a meta heuristic algorithm which is used for optimization for search problem uh, in majority. And it uh, search and optimize the problems by mimic the natural selection process. So it's got the name by it, and uh, it's belong to the larger 
class of evolutionary algorithm. In order to do this, we need to put our problem in some um, framework of this algorithm. So first, we need to find a way how we are going to build our chromosomes. These chromosomes represents one solution of our problem. This, uh, usually this is done by binary code. For my implementation, uh, we are going to make a set of possible projections and we will see how on, a, on a future slides. Um, the, second, the second step is you need to generate initial population and it is usually done by random, but if you know some prior knowledge, you can use it in order to put your initial population in solution space near the global optimum that you hypothesize that, that, that you will find easier and faster your, your, your solution. The third one, you need to find a way how you are going to value your individual solutions in your, in your generation. So for this, you, you need a fitness function, and this is the most crucial part of the genetic algorithm. This will tell your algorithm how good is this individual, how good is this solution comparing to the other solution. So it will also, uh, by this, you will, you will make um, probability that this solution is going to reproduce in another phase and it will pass their genes. And also, after each generation, your algorithm will choose from the, from the population which have the best fitness function, it will choose the one that will survive next generation. After this, you need to build your reproduction mechanism, how you're going to select your par uh, parents, will, which will make uh, new children, how will you combine your, your, your chromosomes you know, of these parents in order to make it, it. Uh, for this you, you use crossover operation, and then you have mutation operation, and I will explain why this is also a very really important population, uh, uh, operation, which will you newly created, in a newly created individuals, you will, you will mutate it. After, when you find the solution for this, it is easy then, you will need to find some termination condition, it could be fixed a number of generations, or it could be some, some conditions for threshold or something like that. So, first I need to explain accuracy of GPS devices, which will uh, really help us in the first two steps. First, around the, accurate, uh, around the GPS device, we sometimes some Gaussian distribution, and this Gaussian distribution will tell us what is the probability that we will find the real GPS point, real position of the vehicle around this point. For example, if we sample, if we, oh, so this should move it, but on this slide it's not moving. Okay, if we sample some points around the seven meter di di diameter around the points, we will be sure that we will find, in 50% of time, we will find uh, a real, real position of the vehicle. And this is, this, is, this is the data from 2012 where we collected the data, so now technology advances, so this, this number could be different now, could be less, so. And if we get a bigger radius, for example, we want to be sure 95% that we will find the real GPS position here. Then uh, it will, we will took a radius for 20 meter. And why is this important? This is important to find the genes for our problem. First, we have some GPS position here. If we took a seven, a seven meter radius, we will find one, one gene for, for this position. If we took a bigger radius and we want to be more, more certain that we will find the real position here, we will took a great radius, but then we will have more variety, which is not good for our problem. It will make our problem, uh, our solution space bigger. And you will see in a slide where I'm going to explain you how we are going to make this first step to encode our chromosome. First, we have some dummy example with the possible position of GPS devices here. So. For each of these GPS devices, we will took some area around it, and we will try to find where we could project this GPS. So, this could be this could be one example. For the first point, we have blue, red, and gray point. This is a possible a possible gene on this part of the chromosome. For the second one, we have a blue and red, and etc. So, on your right side, you see a solution space of this problem. On this solution space, we are going to generate a combination of different of different genes and Actually, in the final, we want to find the real combination that will present our, our process, the GPS, GPS trajectory. And this is, this is actually how we're going to encode our problem. We'll, we will have a, for each position, we will have a set of possible projections and we will combine them. It's easy. The second one, we want to generate initial population. And actually, this presentation have a smaller error here. How I can uh, make a laser here, sorry. Which button? The red button. The biggest one. 
here. No. Sorry. Oh. Don't worry. I will. I will show. <laughs> I will continue with it. We, uh, this formula about uh, probability, uh, I need to uh, one over this, and this is uh, there with uh, each difference here because we want to. We we hypothesized that the closer the point to our to our uh, the closer the point to the real GPS projection, uh, there is bigger chance that this is really a point. So we want in the first population we want to have frequently to have those 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 genes. So for each point we will make some probability that is going to be reciprocal value uh, of a difference. So that we will favorize the one that is closer. And by doing this, we are hoping that we are going to generate our population near the global optimum in solution space. After this, we want, we want to make our fitness function. And this is, as I said, a crucial part that I will speak more, more broadly about it. Uh, this is multi-objective functions, which we are going to use it. For the first part, we want to, make, to find the shortest path between these between these genes, and for this we are going to use the Astra algorithm in dynamic programming technique, uh, dynamic programming technique for for memorizing what we what we uh, calculated. And for the next part, we are going to value the similarity between the shape of GPS trajectory and for our candidate points, uh, candidate paths. Uh, for this, we are going to use dynamic time wrapping technique, and this is actually the first time that this kind of technique is used for this uh, for this. Uh, kind of studies because it is it is invented for for finding similarity between sounds and I will explain how this algorithm doing in some dummy examples in which is uh, this is not uh, meant to be like this slide also first uh, for our style algorithm we want to f this blue this green green uh, points represent our origin uh, our previous points and the blue represents our uh, next point, so we're going to, uh, to try to find, find the shortest path. And for this, we're going to start searching around the origin point, and we're going to enumerate the candidate point as, for the shortest path, the one that has a smaller value of a link, with which connected to the previous point, and with the distance of this candidate point to the, to the goal point. By doing this, we're going to branch our problem, until we f and we will continue until we find the shortest path. So, by doing this, we could also introduce immuno system of our genetic algorithm, which will fix our chromosomes if there is an error. Let's assume that we know the timestamps, and we will, we, we will know the, the timestamps of these red dots, which represent some GPS points. We will find some projections here, and we will, our chromosomes will give us this path. And what if on this path we have some unfeasible, uh, unfeasible uh, speeds? So we need to increase then the radius of the middle point here in order, and we are go going to hope that we are going to find the real position. If we found it, we so, uh, find a way to a uh, solution for this problem. And this is when we have a slightly bigger error when we record our GPS device, uh, when we record our, our, our points. So this is 95% of cases, it's, it's, it's this error, but if we can't find this, this point then, we should see if we have feasible speeds on the first and the second part of this path. If we don't find it, then uh, we can have, if, if the both of this path is not feasible, then we should remove this point. And this is the spikes in, in error. You, you sometimes occur some bigger error while you're recording, and uh, this is usually not the case, but there, there is time when, when this is the case. But usually what, what you will also occur, it's when vehicle traversed through the path which is not meant to be traversed by the vehicle uh, and uh, when you don't for example have you have uh, you don't have updated the vector map so you have some links that is not uh, drawn on your vector map so in these cases you should um, split those sequences and tag them for the future to see what is the problem here and continue with the two, uh, two, se two uh, separate sequences the second part of fitness function uh, you want to find the similarity between uh, tra GPS trajectory and the pad that you, you, uh, you it's your candidate for, for the solution. For, and you basically do this on your, 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 
a picture on the lower picture here on the lower illustration, and you find you try to to find you you will enumerate the blue points here, and you will enumerate the the black points, and you will reconstruct the matrix of distance between each point. So, for example, from the first point, you will try to find distance from the uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight point. And this will be first row, and etc. And on this graphic, you want to find actually this blue cell and red cell. You want to find the you want to find uh, the shortest path here. And you have a rule. You can go left, you can go down, you can go diagonally toward the, the red, but you can go up, you can't go uh, backward. And by doing this, you should find the shortest path. And this shortest path and this matrix actually represent the value of a minimal spatial deformation needed to project this original GPS trajectory that you have to, the, to the, your candidate point. Candidate path. Now, when we have our fitness function, now we can rank our individuals that is created in previous process. And how we're going to, uh, and why we needed this. We needed this because each rank, and this is illustration here, if you have, for example, just five individuals, for each rank, you will have some predefined probability that this individual is going to be uh, included in reproduction process. And you want to break linearity. Why? Because in the future, you want to break linearity between this possibility and the value of fitness function. Because in some future future representation, your uh, your population could uh, enter in a local optimum, and will will be difficult for your algorithm to escape it if it uses just 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 the fitness function for for estimating the probability. So we are just using it to rank it. And after it, and it, as I said, it's a help algorithm to escape local optimum, and you will you will make a possible possible uh, copy, NAFI copy for for each individual, and this this actually should go in this circle, and from this circle we will have a bigger population here, and we will sample from this population pairs of parents. On the next slide, when we selected the pair of parents, each parents will. Uh, enter in a crossover operation process where we will combine their genes. For the first one, we have a yellow, a yellow, yellow line here. This is represented the first row, row gene for one parent. The second one, it's this blue, blue, blue line here. And this is the second parent. We want to randomly find the two splitting points for these chromosomes and to change their inner parts. And this is basically what this need to do in animation here this part of the chromosome will go up and this will go down. So we'll have two different, and you can't see because the animation doesn't work here, so I will, I will explain from this part. And you will have a two new child here, two new individual solutions. And after that, you want to take one small sample of your, of your individual, uh, new, new, newly created individuals, and you want to mutate it. Why you want to mutate it? Because while you're doing crossover, you can't lost some genes in your population. And you can't re-invite uh, re them in your population if you don't have it. So you need a mechanism for this. And this is mutation mechanism. Also, it, it will uh, help uh, your population to escape a local optimum. And for example, if we show this uh, newly created individual to mutate it, we will randomly show one part of it, and we will change it, change it, uh, uh, projection point to another, and we will traverse the path rate. For each of these individuals, we are going to uh, recalculate the fitness function for it, and we are going to rank, rank, our, uh, rank our individuals in a new generation, and we're going to select, select the best ones. So we're going to repeat this process enough time. And after we um, uh, fulfill our condition, is this the last generation? And then we will choose the best one as a solution. So we have another problem here, which I want to explain. And this is when you have a long sequences. If you have a long sequences, you will have a bigger solution space. And for example, on this, on this example here, each column represents one, one, uh, one uh, generated records of GPS position. And for each record, we have possible projections here. So I want 
to illustrate how solution space, uh, in discrete way, how this solution space is looking. So in this solution space, we have 63 million combination and we need three minutes to, to find the solution. So what we're going to do, we're going to make a subsequence here. For the first part, we will have 55,000. For this, we need one second. And we're going to, to adopt all projection points uh, un until the last point because we want to clip these two sequences to pass the information from the previous sequence to the next sequences in order in which part of solution space this next sequences need to search for the problem. So we will find this solution and it will be just one second needed to, to, process, to process everything. So the performance of this algorithm. First, we try performance without this clipping technique and we chose 100 generations uh, 100 generations for our problem, and we need two seconds mean to to process uh, pr to process it. So we saw that we needed only three generations, 95% of the sample, and we reduced it and implemented implemented the strategy with uh, subsequences previous strategy, and we reached around 0 0.3 seconds uh, in a mean. The next slide is accuracy, and this is the mind part of this. We, we, what we want to achieve, we want to achieve really accurate, accurate algorithm. So we sample the data from the urban center of the city where the density of the network is bigger. And uh, we should know the true path of the vehicle because we need to, to compare it with something that we got it from our algorithm. And for this, we use a commercial vehicle which we have predefined path, so we know which path it is. And we sample 50, 100 trajectories for this. And this is, this is performance of my algorithm with uh, comparison to other algorithm is ranked as the second on the world, in the world. The first one is uh, by Newman and Krumen author, but I must make uh, some disclaimer that this author just stated in their abstract that they reach this, this kind of precision and nobody in a the text, they, they, they explain how they did it, what sample they use it, or, or it, I repeat it again about this, this example. And actually, I. This is the end of my presentation here. I, I wanted to end it with accuracy here. And I want to thank you. No, yeah, okay. So uh, it says a typical problem with genetic algorithm is creating a bad initial population that will not later evolve into something good. How frequently did this happen to you? Uh, we didn't use random, random creating of population. We used self random. We know the, we we know that uh, the closer the 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 possible point, uh, the possible projection to the, our GPS records is, there is a bigger chance that this is going to be, this is going to be the real point. So we use this knowledge to give the more weight to those points in initial initial population so that we will have the the best not the best but better better initial population any more questions uh, uh, my name is Angio I'm from Bulgaria I'm working in similar area just a quick uh, technical question uh, what is the numerical representation of your uh, chromosome? Uh, it is a symbol. You have a map. Uh, you make a dictionary of your, uh, you enumerate it as one, two, three, mm -hmm. uh, any number. This, this symbol doesn't mean anything, but it will map to longitude the latitude of the nodes on your, 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 your map. Okay, thank you. Hello, I asked the I asked the initial question. Okay, okay. Uh, one more. Uh, how did you know how many generations you should take to get the accuracy that you have? Uh, did you use it like experimentally? Did you have to wait? Did you have any time limit or how did you choose? Um, I chose it by by the way. I wanted to have some certainty that I will I will I will create uh, enough generate that I will have enough generations to have accurate accurate data. But I I want to optimize running time. This is actually hyperparameter. First, as you as you saw. I put it 100, I, I was experimented and put it 100 generation, but I saw that I find the final solution, I was tracking the solution when it's created. I, 
I saw that 95% I created the final solution, it's a third generation, and for the maximum, I needed 27th generation. Then I implemented this subsequences technique to, to, uh, to process part and parts of, of my whole GPS sequences, and for this, actually, I didn't, I needed uh, less amount of generation, I needed one generation or two generations to do it. So basically, if you have a many projection, you will maybe will need two or three generations. And this was enough for, for this problem. I have a lot of samples for here. I have tracked the data from the three years of uh, generated by in a street network. Uh, so I have a lot of samples to found this hyperparameter in a real data set. And one more, uh, how did you choose the size of the initial population? The size of initial population is, was also experimental. experimental. Because, yes, we, we can, you can choose it. Uh, you, will, you will choose your size of initial population uh, in order, and you will track the accuracy and the performance. This is the two most yeah. prominent, prominent, uh, prominent parameters. And when you are satisfied with your results, because it's also hyperparameter, uh, and you, you, uh, the, in with this way, you want to optimize running time and you want to optimize the accuracy of, of, of uh, final, final results. So you can, you can track when you have some certain, certain when, when you're certain in some confidence level about your results if you, if you rise it down this, this hyperparameter. Yeah, so they were both experimental, right? Yeah, it's, it was experimental and you tracked it. Thanks. You're welcome. Any more questions? We have five or six minutes. Oh, I was fast. You were really fast. <laughs> fast and furious. So, <laughs> uh, if we don't have any more questions, I would thank you. Thank you.